Hey guys, this is Mario. Um, so this is part two of how to mech. And in this section, we're going to go over a basic build. A build that should work throughout every single league, all the way up until Grandmaster. Why is this? Well, or at least high masters, medium masters. This should help out a lot of people. And the reason why I chose this build is, yes, I have many of them, uh, or at least two of them um, on my YouTube but they are very, very advanced, and I want to give you guys something simple that you can use to improve with. So let's go ahead and start this up. It's just going to be very easy AI. We, we don't really want to deal with the AI. We're going to be focused on the beginning part of the build. So, yeah. Any good mech build is safe against nearly everything, or at least safe up until the stage where you know what your weaknesses are and how to scout them. I actually picked Protoss. Oops. Let's do that again. It's Terran, add AI. We're gonna make him Protoss. Focus on economy. So let's go. So, we want it to be relatively safe against any, every, almost anything. So what we need to know is like, what are some of the popular rushes and cheeses, and uh, what can what can we do to stop most of the things that are going to kill us? You see, a build isn't supposed to give you a hundred percent win loss, a win loss ratio. A good build will allow you to win the majority of your games. As long as you're winning the majority of your games, you're always improving, and always, you know, uh, moving forward. In lower leagues, what you want to do is you do not want to stack workers. This is really hard for lower leaguers to do. Um, it can take a lot of time away from your build. You know, it's something like this, you know, where you stack them on the cluster mineral patch. It can take a lot of time or focus away from your build, and it can cause you to mess up. So, in lower leagues, what I want you to do is just to send them to different mineral patches. Don't even worry about it. Now, at 9 supply, we rally over to the front and make a supply depot. And it'll, it'll say 10 supply, because our 10th SCV will be building at that time. So at 9, we start the rally, and at 10, we build the depot, with the SCV from the rally. Very important, it's something you should always practice, you don't want to mess that up, because it will mess up your supply depot timing. Don't pay attention to what I'm doing with the workers, that's out of sheer habit. Now there are two ways we can build this barracks. I've been a big fan of placing it at the front lately. lately. Um, not really before, but there's been a lot of cheeses I've been facing, so this is where I place it. Very, very important. If you don't place it there, you should be ready to build a bunker here, but for the sake of this build, place your barracks at the front. Now we do not get any gas until this is 14 supply, then we rally over to the gas geyser, just like with the depot we would do when it says 9 supply. Make sure there's no, another SCV loaded in, build a gas geyser with that SCV. Now this SCV is going to do the scouting. Very important that you send one SCV to scout exactly what's going on. So you can see if it's a rush or something. And then we stay at 15 supply, make another supply depot, marine, transfer two SCVs over. So that's kind of a lot to take in, so remember, when it's when it's 15 supply and your barracks is about to finish, do not start another SCV. You want to start your, in this order, the orbital command, then the supply depot to help deny scouts, drops, and cheeses, or, or scouts and cheeses, you know, zealots from walking in, so you want to block off the path, make a marine, and then transfer the gas. So this... SEV, we're just going to set him to patrol in the area. We're not going to be really concerned with him. We're going to focus entirely on the build. We are actually going to go up to two marines, and we want them in the back. I kind of play risky and kill these rocks. Okay. Don't you worry about that. The moment this is done, drop your mule, make his depot. Now what do we do from here? There's two things we can really do to feel safe. And um, you know, one of those things is, if you want to feel really safe, and at lower levels, this, sh this shouldn't matter for you. You can do this, and it's not the biggest deal. You move the barracks out of the way, get a reactor, wall off with a bunker. This will delay your expansion, but most of the time, as a lower leaguer, you will greatly appreciate this in case there's any type of cheese or rush. So again, we're showing you a basic build that's 
that you know um, that that's useful. That will get you a lot of wins and grow your understanding of the game. Now, with this SCV that made the bunker, we're gonna go ahead and build a factory on top of the reactor. We're gonna start two SCVs. Make sure we got our two marines. Make sure we got another SCV going. It should be a 14 supply. Start the supply depot and then drop the mule. We really want that supply depot to go up fast because you can see one, we're going to be at 25. We're going to start one marine, not two marines. Very important we make one marine because this supply depot normally, I guess I'm doing this build really well. Um, I'm not multitasking very well, but normally you, this SCV is late. We can sacrifice, and, and it was late. Um, just yeah, it, it was. It would have been late if we didn't do that. So we don't want to sacrifice SCVs. We start a starport, make one widow mine, two marines, SCV refinery. There we go. Don't worry, that is 32 out of 35, because this is going to be uh, command center is going to finish. It's going to give us 10 supply, so we do not yet need a supply depot. There we go, up to 46. <clears throat> Make sure to keep making workers. We got the marines still producing. We're gonna transfer SEVs to this gas as fast as we can. And you might ask, Mario, why haven't we expanded? Well, we don't actually need to at this stage of the game. You see, the reasons why pro players expand so fast and th why they get the bunker on the low ground is because they know what usually what they can and can't handle, so they're not that afraid of it. They, you know, they use their scouting to rely on things on low leagues. This is a huge issue for you. You don't actually know what you're scouting. So you don't actually know what to do. You, you don't... You, you, it's very simple. You are not experienced enough and you don't have enough game knowledge to know um, why that works and why it doesn't. So the reason why you keep the bunker on the high ground is you don't actually need to expand until you are coming close to oversaturating your, saturating your main base. And there's a way where we can expand safer without, you know, with less risk of you getting cheesed and rushed, and it's this way. Now, remember that we got the widow mine uh, and you can see it in the section it's done. And now we're going to start a tech lab, and we're starting a medevac. Well, okay, how is this going to help me get my expansion? Number one, the medevac and the widow mine aren't. Unless there's an oracle about to fly into your base, which should not be a problem because you just run your workers to your marines, you'll have more than six marines, six marines kills an oracle, and then you'll have your widow mine to help out. And instead of uh, a medevac, you just get a viking, and you can chase the oracle away. So, no worries. You know, instead of the medevac, we make the viking. So that's what you do if you would see um, a, an oracle. If your opponent hasn't expanded by the 4 minute and 40 second mark, or maybe even the 5 minute mark for lower leagues, you definitely want to prepare for him to attack your front with a, a, a 4 gate or some type of heavy cheese. Just lower your supply depots, cover your whole bunker in SCVs, um, you know, just keep spam right-clicking on them, hold position, and then right-click on the repair, and they will not move, they will not run away, they will stay on top of that bunker repairing it every time it gets hurt. There's no need for you to stay and watch it if you do that properly. Otherwise, you can just keep right-clicking, it's not a big concern. And uh, if you do face a 4 gate, you know, try to drop two more bunkers, because if he doesn't expand, all you have to do is survive. So don't worry about that. So this is kind of the first part of the build. Um, it's very important for this to to kind of flow together or you'll miss a lot of timings. Let's cover one last section of this and that'll be enough for this video. Now at about 38, 39 we want to start another supply depot. Upgrade complete. We're going to keep making marines. You can see we have plenty of marines. And as long as he's expanded, we're fine. No concern. Complete. We're going to move this barracks over, or this factory over. And make another tech lab. From here on, we can kind of go, are we safe to expand? And we can send an SCV out to their base. Now, if they haven't expanded, they might be going for some type of cheese. It could be various sorts of cheese, you know? It could be a blink stalker or so on. But it doesn't matter, because instead of the raven, we would get a siege tank. So let's say, okay, we're now safe to expand we are going to get two bunkers. We're going to drop this down to the low ground. 
We're going to transfer a few SCVs and make one gas geyser. And this one widow mine, we can use it to pressure. This one widow mine and this one medevac, it's just pressure. We don't have to attack. It is not designed for you to lose this widow mine. You know, you don't have to lose this widow mine. You, you don't need to do anything with it. This is just a cute part of the build where if you want to spend a little extra APM, you can pressure. You can drop it, let it fire, pick it up. It doesn't actually have to stay there. After the Raven, you can choose to go into Cloak Banshees. You want two at the most. Uh, you do want another expansion before your fourth gas. And you want a Viking or two. Probably around two Vikings. That's fine. And this is how the first part of the bell goes. So the next part is the transition into mech. And um, it's going to be... In, you know, that's going to be for the next video. Uh, this part kind of covers how to stay safe, how to uh, make specific things. It covers two things to look for. The biggest things, which will be like Foregate, Early Pressure, or Oracle, so three things. And um, uh, some transitions and what to scout for and Nexus timing. So this holds a lot of information. So let's keep it like this. And next time, we're going to continue um, from a similar type of situation and then go ahead you know, and, and teach you to the transition. So our goal right now is to make it this far and stay alive. Thanks for watching, guys. Tune in for the next video.